would like to also look at the valuation aspects behind the mergers what are the different ways in which the target companies are uh, evaluated or valued from a merger standpoint also we would uh, see how the benefits are basically uh, uh, distributed between the target company and an acquiring company so basically all that uh, preliminary uh, concepts and uh, the basic mathematical uh, calculation behind the mergers and acquisition is what we would be looking at all right so let's get uh, started with this now whenever we talk about a merger versus an acquisition there is a difference between the two words whenever i am trying to acquire or purchase a some portion of the company not the entire company whenever i am trying to purchase some portion of a company could be like one business unit or probably uh, one subsidiary of the company not the whole company one single branch whenever such kind of uh, purchasings are happening or some assets of some specified assets of the company whenever such kind of things are being uh, taken over we call that as an acquisition whereas uh, when we when the target is for the entire company we call it as merger now in this merger itself we find quite a good number of classifications so based on the form of acquisition we actually classify the mergers into three categories one a statutory merger a subsidiary merger and a consolidation let's say a and b a and b have got into a statutory merger then in this let's say if a is the acquirer and b is the target what generally happens in a statutory merger is b will stop existing as a legal entity b will not exist as a legal entity so all the assets and liabilities of b are transferred to a and a will be the general a will exist as it is this is the case of a statutory merger but in most of the cases though the target is smaller than the acquirer in some cases we find target itself is bigger than the acquirer something uh, like the case of a reverse merger so basically uh, in a regular merger the target may be smaller compared to an acquirer but uh, in some cases we have seen the target is much bigger than the acquirer also so but the basic uh, aspect in case of uh, statutory merger is the target company will cease to exist and it's only the acquiring company uh, that would uh, exist legally now the next form which is a subsidiary merger is the same if a and b have got into a subsidiary merger then both of them a and b both of them exist but b exists as a subsidiary of a means the branding and everything of uh, a b uh, will still remain so b does not uh, get out as get out uh, 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 of the existence it exists as a legal entity generally this kind of thing is uh, uh, is possible when you see that b has a very good uh, brand image it, it has a very good uh, brand name or uh, it has a very good uh, value among the customers and uh, a does not want to remove that and impact its profitability in that case we see that b will be becoming a subsidiary to a and both the brands will exist both the companies will exist as separate legal entities that is what is the case in uh, subsidiary merger and when, and so in this case the major uh, focus is b having a separate uh, identity of its own in the market 
whereas in case of consolidations between A and B both of them will not exist both of them combine together to form another legal entity called C and that C would uh, exist and not A and B anymore generally this kind of a deal is possible between the companies of more or less equal size like an Arcelor and a Mittal coming together and uh, so Arcelor Mittal is the new formation wherein the individual uh, companies have ceased to exist so such kind of uh, equal uh, where the where the companies have equal weights we see that generally uh, uh, a consolidation kind of a merger comes into picture the other type of classification I look is by the type of merger means what kind of companies are combining together what kind of companies are coming together so that can be classified as horizontal especially if the merger is between two two competing competing companies in the same industry probably adidas taking over reebok two companies in the same industry right uh, or HP taking over compact so these kind of mergers whatever it is it could be a statutory or it could be a subsidiary or it may be a consolidation I'm not bothered about that when I'm looking at it from the perspective of the type so whenever the merger is between two competing firms in the same industry Primarily for the purpose of economies of scale, increasing the market power or in some cases uh, eliminating the duplicate resources, probably R&D team of this and the R&D team of this, both of them researching on the same aspect. But if they combine together, I can eliminate the duplicate resources and probably uh, reduce my costs or increase my revenues, whatever it is. So, the general uh, motivation being the economies of scale or elimination of the duplicate resources or probably even gain in the market share or create a kind of a monopoly in the market. So, there are so many uh, kind of motivations behind this but typically the classification wise whenever the two firms in the same industry are combining together we call it as horizontal whenever the two firms that are combining are in the value chain or supply chain probably A is acquiring B where B is their major supplier of raw materials or probably A is acquiring B where B is the largest, uh, largest consumer of their uh, products so in such kind we call the, the kind of merger between A and B as a vertical merger the company which you are merging with the company which you are acquiring is somewhere in the supply chain or the value chain of the company either up or down when it is uh, up we call it as backward integration when it is down which is like a customers we call it as forward integration when it is with the suppliers we call it as backward integration when it is with the customers we take it as a forward integration there then the other dimension which we look at is the conglomerate merger wherein there is no relationship no I mean they can be from any industry they need not be competitors you are just combining uh, two companies in completely unrelated kind of industries they are neither competitors nor as a part of the value chain any other companies you are trying to acquire that goes as a conglomerate uh, merger probably uh, uh, the Sun group acquiring Spicejet Airlines the Sun group is more into an entertainment industry whereas the spice jet is into airlines may or may not have any kind of industry relationship 
so when these two kind of firms merge together it's an example of a conglomerate kind of a merger so we need to really uh, understand what kind of uh, merger is uh, happening because that really uh, helps us uh, in assessing the synergies and in doing uh, in in actually uh, understanding what could be the motivation for this kind of a, a merger now going further we are looking at what could be the different kinds of synergies or motivations i don't use the word synergy but let me use the word motivation what could be the prime motivation in terms of getting for a merger so the most common motivation that is being talked about <coughs> is synergy synergy is some benefit and most of the time we see the benefit which would result in terms of revenue going up or the expenses coming down or both so which means it's like saying revenues of a plus b together will be much more than revenues of a plus revenues of b this that excess is what is called as a synergy similarly combined expenses of a plus b will be less than the expenses of a plus expenses of b separately which means there could be some duplicate usage of resources etc so this is called as a cost reduction synergy this is a revenue growth synergy and in some cases i may get both of them so whenever we are looking at such kind of uh, scenarios our intention is to find what is the value of this synergy by how much extent the revenues of a plus b is greater than the revenue of a plus revenue of b the same thing by what extent the expense of a plus b is lesser than the expense of a plus expense of b so the combined company is worth more than the parts as a part of synergy analysis so a typical motivation in any m&a deal is the present or perceived presence of synergies between the two apart from synergies we would also look at a few more motivations in terms of uh, the typical m&d deals the growth i want to grow faster right see there is a possibility of growing organically where i recruit more people slowly i will grow on the other side i am growing at an exponential rate by acquiring other companies so i will acquire or i'll merge with some other successful company or some other uh, company which could increase my market share very quickly without uh, 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 without uh, too much of uh, learning curve involved because uh, the company is already present uh, in the business quite a, for a, quite a few years so through acquisition i can very well uh, grow at a much faster rate that could be one of the motivations behind uh, the merger and acquisition there is a good side as well as a bad side worldcom as a company became a very good competitor to at&t primarily through the motive of uh, the mergers and acquisitions itself where almost 60 odd acquisitions were done within a span of 7 years but of course that was also a sad story it this this kind of uh, overly uh, emphasized uh, acquisitions and no proper consolidations had result in a, a pathetic downfall for that company also though mnd can really help in drastic dramatic growth within no time if not done properly it can have its own side effects then mergers and acquisitions also provide for increase in the market share and market power probably you may you may you are consolidating the market if there are 10 players probably because of a few acquisitions you can reduce the number of players to 5 and at the same time the the uh, your market share will increase drastically 
which may result in monopolizing or duopolizing or oligopolizing the entire market so the, your market power generally increases along with the market share when we are looking at uh, m and a strategy and sometimes i may have i may observe in a target company some unique resources 